From halfway around the world come two adventurers who will stop at nothing to see for themselves what's left of Borneo's once glorious tattoo traditions. Forging their way into country that was home to perhaps the fiercest headhunters the world has ever known, these two Canadians are hot on the trail of some of Sarawak's last remaining tribal tattoo masters. A small hand tap tattoo of only a few square inches takes many painful hours to pound into the flesh with a needle on a stick. But it's been decades since anyone along the Skrong River has seen this rite performed. These tattoo hunters won't quit until they've witnessed this vanishing ritual firsthand. Even sacrificing themselves to the needles, if they have to, to keep this dying art form alive. So, now what? Well, there should be someone we can ask. I'm Vince Hemmingson, writer and now historian of tattoo lore. My partner with the full body tattoo is renowned tattoo artist Thomas Lockhart. Tom's been tattooing for a quarter of a century, while I'm relatively new to the tattoo world. And what better place to start than Borneo? Right now, we're looking to charter a boat to start our journey. You're from where? Hi, we're from Canada. Canada, yes. yes. Yeah. So, thank you very much. So it's nice to meet you. Do you know if these are the boats take yeah, us to yeah, the South boat. China Sea? Can we hire these yes, boats? Yes, the China Sea. Get, oh, this boat. those are the boats for the yeah, South yeah, China yeah. Sea. For me, it all began the day I walked into West Coast Tattoo in Vancouver, Canada. As Tom inked my first tattoo, he regaled me with tales of his far-flung adventures in search of ancient tattoo practices. But it was Borneo with its history of headhunters, their bodies covered with suits of elaborate tattoos that really captured Tom's imagination. It wasn't long before I wanted to pack up and head for Borneo myself. And here we are today, heading out on what promises to be an incredible journey. Tom says we should make for the headwaters of the Skrong River, a boat journey of some 400 kilometers from our starting point, here in Kuching, the capital of the Malaysian state of Sarawak. Borneo is the largest landmass between Australia and Asia, and it's about as far from home as two Canadians can get. At just a single degree north of the equator, Vince and Thomas couldn't have picked a much hotter place either. Early explorers to Borneo told fabulous tales of incredible sights, none more frightening than the fabled wild man of Borneo. But the arrival of Europeans in the 19th and 20th centuries began to take the wild out of the warrior and the magic out of the indigenous culture. Some of that magic was tied up in tribal tattoos, marks so sacred that without them, the people would become invisible to their gods. Just like those early explorers, Vince and Thomas head eastwards from Kuching along the edge of the South China Sea. We thought we'd probably lose our bearings at some point on our three-week journey, but not this soon. Heavy smoke from forest fires on the Indonesian side of Borneo have completely obliterated the horizon. Placing our trust in the captain, we join him in the only thing we've forgotten to do, pray for a safe passage. We're not sure what gods we're invoking or whose protection we're seeking, but since we'll be heading up a river, once known as the River of Death, we figure we'll need all the help we can get. This part of the journey ends 50 kilometers up the Skrong at Pais. Here, they've arranged a rendezvous with two brothers, whom Thomas has often met at tattoo conventions around the world, Eddie and Simon David. Hey! Simon, Eddie, how are you well, guys doing? Well, 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 the famous David yeah, brothers. Can you guys know why? Eddie and Simon are the new generation of Iban. Iban are Borneo's largest ethnic group. You got some new tattoos, I see. You must be Vince. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. I love your tattoos. Thanks. They grew up not in the jungles, but among the high rises of the Malaysian capital, Kuala Lumpur, where they became tattooists in their own right. Eddie and Simon jumped at this opportunity to join the expedition because it's headed for the long house of their grandfather's brother, an old man they haven't seen since they were children the legendary Aki Busai. It's time for Eddie and Simon to reconnect with their past.
They push onwards up the river of death in traditional Iban longboats, nowadays propelled by outboard motors. My brother and I, uh, we used to dislike going to the longhouses when we were kids because we didn't want to miss our favorite TV programs and um, our friends and going to the malls. And uh, when we were kids, we viewed uh, going to the longhouses as being uncool. Our friends would always make fun of you when you were, oh, you're from the longhouse and you're primitive and stuff like that. Especially about the tattoos. They viewed the tattoos as being primitive, as a mark of a savage. This is about as far as crocs come up the scrong, so we can breathe more easily and enjoy other jungle fauna, like the proboscis monkey. The scrong looks idyllic, but don't let it fool you. Navigating through rapids and whirlpools is dangerous enough, but even more deadly snags and boulders lurk beneath the surface, keeping our boatmen on their toes. We've only been on the river for two hours, and already we're presented with a feast of tattoos. The hand-tapped designs on the back of our boatman, Lagan, are bold and skillfully done. It's got me thinking what I wouldn't give for a hand-tapped tattoo of my own. Got some interesting tattoos here. Don't mind if I take a couple pictures of you. You had that done up river, I presume, did you? Tom appreciates the time and skill that goes into body art like this, and he wants a record of it. That man goes nowhere without his camera. Great shot. Excellent. Mm. All the way up his leg, right mm. up his thigh, too. That's incredible. Excellent. I really appreciate this. Now, I noticed that you have a cowboy on your arm. What's the significance of a cowboy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like cowboys? Yeah. He's got a, he's got the... Uh... <laughs> a cowgirl. <laughs> and what does this tattoo represent? Uh, this is a kalapa. This, this is a pie, Kala, scorpion. Kalapa. Yeah. A scorpion. Kalapa. Kalapa. Uh, yeah. In Iban. In Iban. Yeah. And it goes all over your leg? Yes. Yeah. There are three. Um, one, two, and three. And what do they mean? He doesn't really know the meanings of the tattoos, but back in the day, when uh, uh, women, the women would, uh, were not going to go for a man without a tattoo. Ah, so tattoos are very attractive to women. Yes. yes. Uh. <laughs> From scorpions to cowgirls. Our boatman's tattoos tell the story of a tribal people inching away from their traditional ways. Eddie told me that 62-year-old Lagan received his tattoos while on Bujalai. This was an age-old Iban custom I would hear a lot about. Eddie described Bujalai as a young man's rite of passage, a journey downriver with his companions, out into the world in search of adventure, wealth, and knowledge. And not so long ago, human heads. This is Tom's third journey into Sarawak. Each time he's come looking for skulls and any sign of the old tattoo practices. The last time he was here, few of the old tattooists were still alive. He only hopes it's not too late for Vince to witness a hand tap tattoo session for himself. After a day pushing up river, the expedition arrives at La Long, the halfway point up the Scrong. The longhouse at La Long is home to five extended families, including relatives of Eddie and Simon. The Iban measure their homes by the number of family units, or doors. This one is 28 doors long, an entire community of 120 people living under one roof. In the old days, the bigger the longhouse, the better. More people meant better protection against raiding headhunters. To you and I, old skulls like these are a gruesome sight. But to the Iban, they're a priceless legacy handed down from their ancestors. The Iban believe that the soul of a person lives in their skull. When a warrior took a head, he captured not only the soul, but he added the victim's status and strength to his own. 
And unless they're kept warm on cold nights, the teeth in the skulls start to chatter and keep everyone awake. This is spooky enough to start me looking over my shoulder for spirits, which begs the question, does this spirit world play a role in the Iban tattoo tradition? There's no way we're leaving this wrong until we find out. The sight of Tom with his full bodysuit of tattoos puts everyone in the longhouse at ease. Oh, that's going to go over here. Mm. Dude, naga, naga. Oh, that's dragon, is it? Yeah, I got one of those too here. Yeah. A little dragon in here. Oh. That's a naga there. In English or in Iban, a dragon inked into the human body is enough to intimidate any here? evil spirit. The tattoos back there? The tattooed images are a language unto themselves. <laughs> <laughs> back there, dude, solid. It's a lot of pack, and I can't imagine how long that took. Mm. This took me about 20 years to do all my body suit. Yeah. It's a Japanese style, mm. but uh, called a kimono. By the spirits. Okay. Tom's especially curious about who, or what, decides where the tattoo goes on the body. I know it's aesthetic to have it out here in the show, but why do they do it up here? This elder confirms that the placement of the tattoo comes in the form of messages from the spirit world. Oh, so it's the spirits that are dictating where these tattoos are. Oh, okay. It's uh, just heartbreaking to see this disappearing. When I was up here in 96, visiting all these longhouses, there was maybe a, a dozen men left that still had these full body suits. I came back a couple years later, and there was just a handful, now there's even fewer. It's just disappearing. Unfortunately, this medium of, of tattooing is a fleeting one. It's done on the body, so obviously when the guy dies, he loses the tattoos. And by keeping stencils like this, sort of maintains that art, but it also um, it allows each individual in the longhouse to have identical tattoos to all the other members in the longhouse. As Eddie fires up his electric tattoo machine to ink a design on his cousin Dana, it's not exactly the revival of tattoo traditions we were hoping to see. Whenever we come by to the longhouses, right, um, when these guys see us coming, they know we br we've brought out tattoo machines and stuff, so we've got a line even before we reached the door, man. <laughs> so um, the interest of getting tattoos is there, but not the old style tattoos. They want American style tattoos, the MTV stuff. It will make me a lot more happier, right, to actually see them get a traditional Iban tattoo rather than something Western. As far as I'm concerned, we are carrying the pride of our people because the very first thing that people look at are our tattoos and the very first thing that they identify uh, that we are Ibans are through our tattoos. Unlike most of his generation, Eddie has a strong attachment to authentic tattoos. If anyone could start a revival of Iban tattooing along the Skrong, he's the one. Unfortunately, most young Iban have forsaken tattoos of any kind. And this tattoo generation gap is just as obvious among the women of the longhouse. Fifty years ago, this grandmother wouldn't have considered marrying a man without tattoos, but her granddaughter sees things quite differently. If her husband came home with a tattoo, she'd kick him out of bed. <laughs> After three days at Lelong, we're anxious to proceed upriver. We're hoping to find an old artist, someone who actually hand-tapped tattoos in the old days. But yesterday's downpour has turned the strong into a raging torrent. Dana! Dana! We're told this river has always flooded and uprooted giant trees, but it's clear to us that the harvesting of some of this timber was no act of God. It turns out there's a bright side to our being stranded. A feast is taking place tomorrow, and we're invited to participate. 
10 minutes ago, it's an entire beach here. Now it's gone. Tom and I learn that we've been given the honor of attracting the attention of the gods by drawing blood. Each of us is expected to kill a pig. No way I'm killing that pig tomorrow. Someone has to do it. We're the guests of honor. Having grown up on a farm, I shouldn't have a problem with this. So why am I nervous? I'm trying to remind myself that it's all part of an age-old ceremony. Headhunting hasn't been practiced along the Scrong for decades, but the Iban still pay homage to the skulls in their possession. In all their major ceremonies, the clanging of the gongs, the ankle bells, the dancing, it's all designed to attract the good spirits. I'm afraid this is going to be bloody, but then that's the whole point. Flowing blood is the symbol of life, and it's supposed to please the spirits. Tom still won't kill a pig, and it isn't making my job any easier. But I can't back out. It would show a definite lack of respect for the Iban's way of life. <laughs> As I understand it, this pig did not die in vain, but its screams still bother me more than I expected. next to be sacrificed, all in aid of summoning the spirits. The chill running up my spine convinces me they're already present. The spirits have a taste for the same things that make an Iban happy, egg, rice, tobacco, and tuac, their potent rice wine. Once again, the honor's mine to present the offering to the skulls. Hanging onto the gunnels with all our strength. Hitting a log could turn us broadside in a second. We wouldn't stand a chance in these rapids. The tattoo hunters battle the rapids for two long hours, all the way to Emperon, and the longhouse of the former headman of the entire Skrong River Basin, Aki Busai. Aki fought in World War II with the British Army as an Iban ranger. Their regiment gained a reputation for being the best jungle trackers ever known. But Aki is most revered for being a direct descendant of a legendary Iban warrior. For city kids like Eddie and Simon, their great uncle, Aki Basai, presents a wonderful opportunity to reconnect with the old way of life. And he's our best chance to plumb the deeper meanings of Ivan tattoos. Aki Busai's longhouse is a modest 18 doors long. It was totally rebuilt 10 years ago when a flood swept everything away, including precious bundles of skulls. <laughs> Aki's impish smile and tattooed eyebrows win me over immediately. Eddie explains that his eyebrows have been inked with a magic pigment 
one that has a particular effect on women. Right? And uh, if you're heavily tattooed, right? Uh, the women will find you very attractive. And <laughs> <laughs> Tattoos is an aphrodisiac. It's a great icebreaker. Exactly. But we want Aki to delve deeper, okay. to take us back yeah, to a time uh, when no man would okay. be caught dead without the, um, his tattoos. The last time uh, where people were very heavily tattooed was during the Japanese occupation. These men were only armed with swords and spears. And the Japanese were armed with machine guns, heavy machine guns, and they were firing at the, at the Iban people. Because of their charms and their tattoos, these bullets would pass by them, even though they were firing straight at, at the Iban men. Now, if only Aki can tell us where the protective power of the tattoo comes from. Oh, uh, that, uh, the, 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 the charms are all given by an antu, the spirits, in the dream or, mm -hmm. uh, or physically when you when you're sleeping. Right. They will come and they will give it and you, you will find it in your head. Or... Aki explained that the spirit attached to the tattoo made it visible to the gods. Uh, so an, an so Iban he... without tattoos cannot get the help from the Iban gods? Yeah, correct. A man without tattoos, it turns out, is virtually invisible. Aki wants me to show him the sacred marks from my life's journey, my Bajalai. I didn't know it yet, but Aki was sizing me up to make me an offer I wouldn't refuse in a thousand years. Day one at the longhouse of Aki Bosai, and Thomas has found something that, for the moment at least, he finds even more exotic than tattoo lore the blowpipe. He's astonished how accurate a blowpipe can be. He never expected it to have such power and range. Were the uh, Eban Rages using these in war? Legend has it, once you're hit, you're dead before you know what hit you. The poison comes from boiling the sap of the deadly Ipo tree. Today though, few Eban still hunt with it. Well, that really does haunt us a lot. So this tattoo here... Vince is giving Aki a tour of his tattoos, starting with the Scottish Lion of the North. So that's, the, that's the line, Lion of the North. And this is Celtic. These are the tattoos of my ancient people. Ah. This is a shield and a sword. Ilang. He wants you to get this and this on here. <laughs> oh, I would, be, I would be so honored to get tattooed. It would be like a dream come true. Iban, Iban, Iban. It's been decided that I'll receive Barong, two matching shoulder tattoos, but not for three days. Time for Tom and I to immerse ourselves in a way of life that has remained largely unchanged for centuries. Planting rice or paddy increases my respect for the stamina of these people. I'd hope my jungle kilt would keep me cool, but half an hour in this heat and I'm staggering. The longer we hang out here, asking questions and trying out this way of life, the more we realize that nothing is quite like it first seems. Dancing, for instance, isn't just dancing, it's the flight of the sacred jungle birds. At 210 pounds, I doubt if I'm going to take off, but never mind. I'm just trying to keep up with my dancing instructor, Gentan, who's twice as old as I am and twice as nimble. But I'm encouraged by a 1932 report of an Oxford expedition to Sarawak. The white man is expected to join in, in every sort of native activity, to drink with them, to join in all ceremonies, and so on. The more native bangles and tattoo marks he has, the better. If he can Charleston and do conjuring tricks, he is bound to be a success. Mars? Lars Krutak of the Smithsonian Institution is a welcome sight. 
We invited him to join us on the Scrong so he could continue his work on women's tribal tattoos. Man, swollen rivers, flash floods, broken outboards. Hey, anybody. A real Good task, a chore, but I'm so glad to see you guys. It's really, it's great to be here. Oh, Lars, it's good to have you here. And let me tell you, there are some wonderful tattoos in this longhouse. And really, I've been searching. I found a few on this river system and adjacent ones, but I'm really excited to see more. So, guys, the river is really much higher than it was yesterday. Yep. Lars Krutak is rare for an academic, an anthropologist who takes tattoos seriously. Can you ask her if I could take some photographs of her tattoos? You roll her arm maybe to the, that's perfect. Right. And roll it over to the side, like that. Right. Yeah, not many people have actually studied women's tattooing throughout the indigenous world, and especially here in Sarawak. And it is an increasingly rare to find such bold designs on women. Would you like Most of the focus has been on tattooing of men mm -hmm. here in Borneo. And one of my goals is to document it before it ultimately disappears. And this has to be one of the few women that has tattoos in this river system. Traditionally, women's tattoos were associated with weaving ceremonial garments, puakambu which were used to receive freshly taken heads after a successful headhunting campaign. You might not imagine weaving to be a hazardous occupation, but it was. Blood red dye gave shape to powerful designs that brought her into dangerous contact with the spirit world. Weaving was appropriately called women's war. And that's where the weaver's tattoos came in, the scorpion and the centipede creatures that were long believed to repel evil spirits. It's no mystery why women stopped wearing these tattoos. They no longer needed the garments associated with headhunting. Why endure the pain of a tattoo session if it's not necessary? Eddie shares Lars' enthusiasm for recording the evidence of this vanishing art form. And encouraged by Thomas Lockhart, Eddie and his brother have been hand-tapping traditional tattoos for two years now. Another of Eddie's mentors is Jen Tan, who's not just an accomplished dancer, but a tattooist. Eddie met him on his first visit to Emperon. The first thing I noticed about this man were his tattoos. It's like the most amazing tattoos that you would ever see. Uh, hand, and all of these were all hand tapped. Um, you can see that this, he's been in the sun every day of his life. And look at the quality of the tattoos, the line work. See how black these tattoos are? The person who did these tattoos spent a lot of time and a lot of effort trying to, to get his tattoos to perfection. If you look at his back, normally this. This tattoo sort of like prevents your head from being cut off. Some people say that uh, this is the last tattoo that you do on your upper tor torso. Jen Tan's tattoos go far beyond decoration. These indelibly inked symbols represent the belief systems of the Iban. Tattoos are his shield from death and his connection to the gods who offer him guidance and protection. Um, from, from the neck tattoo, mm. This is the Batang Skrang style. When, you, uh, when, when, when the people from the other longhouses look at this, they know that this guy is from the Skrang area. Uh, Jantan here has uh, been on a Bajalai for a very long time, and uh, that's why he's covered in all these tattoos. For a man in his 80s, Jantan is in fine physical condition. But the tattoo hunters hear about another old tattooist, upriver, who doesn't have long to live. Lars and the David brothers make a reconnaissance trip to see if the old tattooist named Mong is up for a visit.
Punya putus. Mong's been bedridden for five days, yet he's risen specially to greet his visitors. Lars has seen many subjects of his research die before they passed on their knowledge. So, wisely, he takes the attitude that there's no tomorrow. He appears to bask in the eerie limelight cast by one Stark bulb on Simon's home movie camera. And by Lars Krutek's professional curiosity. The person who gave tattoo a long time ago, was that the real expert tattoo artist? Was that a hereditary position or could anybody do it? Oh. 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 It's a communal thing and everybody is involved. Anybody can do it. Oh. Mong hasn't practiced his tattoo art for decades, but he seems eager to talk about it and relive the days when his tattoos acted as charmed amulets. Like Akibusai, Mong was an Iban ranger and on the receiving end of Japanese machine gun fire. Lars has heard that tattoos also play a role in the afterlife. Mong begins to speak of Mandai, the river that runs through Sebiom, the land of the dead. Departed souls must venture up this treacherous river, hoping to reach the longhouses of their most heroic ancestors. But legend has it that this is a journey only the most heavily tattooed Iban can complete. If that's true, Mong must be making good time through Sebiom, because incredibly, that night, the old man dies in his sleep. The next day, Tom and I head for Mong's longhouse to join with Lars and the David brothers in paying our respects. Mong's death hits home hard. If I had doubts about submitting to the tattoo needles tomorrow, they're gone now. I'll suffer it proudly and in honor of Mong and all this wonderful tattoo tradition that is vanishing right in front of our eyes. So, two tattoos hand tapped tomorrow, like this could be like five or six hours. Oh, it's gonna take the whole day. The whole day. I bet, you know. Are you gonna uh, use two I may sound calm, but truthfully, just, I'm a little anxious about those needles. After all, we're in a climate where a harmless scratch can quickly turn into a festering wound. Yeah, I, I, trust, I trust Eddie and Simon. Yeah. I gather you're making the sticks first, are you? The bamboo, yeah. As a master craftsman himself, Tom is eager to see how the old tools were made. This piece of bamboo will become the needle stick used to hand tap Vince's tattoos later today. I believe he's making a shading machine right now. This would typically have about 14 needles in the end of it. I think for the, uh, the outliners, they use about five, which is pretty close to what we use. 40 years have passed since tattoo implements were last crafted along the banks of the Strong River. 40 years since Gentan last gathered soot on the inside of a pot lid to make the ink. Not that I'm having second thoughts, but I'm beginning to wonder if I have a right to wear Iban tattoos. Then it dawns on me that these tattoos are becoming an integral part of my trip. My Bajalai up the Strong.
After only a few minutes, my shoulder is going numb, but not numb enough to dull the pain of the needles. I can tell it's going to be a long, long day. So Vince, so how does this feel? Weird? Different? Very different from a machine. Eddie's mentor, Jen Tan, offers some technical advice during this first round of hand tapping. While Simon attends to the all-important job of stretching the skin, stretching allows the needles to penetrate the skin and makes for much straighter lines. And there's no question that the stretching actually helps quite a bit. It does, man. But once you get into it, the rhythm becomes easy. And after a while, it just you can hear the sound from the from the tool and from the hitting. Uh, you forget about what's what's around you. You're just listening, the, uh, the the tapping, the sounds of the tapping and all that. It's very hypnotic. Before long, we've got a sizable audience, and I realize that none of these young people have ever seen someone get a hand tap tattoo before. I hope it's a sign that this neglected Iban tradition is capturing their imagination. The sun's gone down, and Jen Tan finally gets his chance to come out of retirement the first time he's tattooed in decades. For Tom, this is the holy grail of tattoo research, observing an old master at work. Jantan doesn't appear to have lost his touch at all. It's sure and steady. Did you know that the word tattoo comes from the Tahitian word tatau and was thought to imitate the sound made by the tattooing instruments? The rhythmic tapping of the hand tools really is hypnotic. I'm starting to lose all track of time and even my sense of pain. Okay, Vince. It's over. Eddie, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Dana. Yes. <laughs> Simon. After six and a half hours, I'm exhausted. I've always seen my tattoos as personal rites of passage, and each of my tattoos is a symbol which is deeply personally important to me, but I think none so important as the tattoos I got here today in this longhouse. Just when Vince suspects that his adventure is winding down, the old patriarch, Aki Basai, is just getting fired up. Uh, Aki is really proud that you have got your tattoos done the traditional way. And now, he wants you to be his adopted son. The tattoos are like his tattoos. The body is like his. I would be honored to be your son and to be part of your family. Thank you. The scrong is a good way to stay cool until tomorrow's adoption ceremony and a good chance to reflect on what my beautiful new tattoos actually mean. The sides of these tattoos just got... Well, I know this part is the flower. Yeah. And while well, Eddie was tattooing me, he said that the center design was based on the design that was found on the belly of a tadpole. Well, I'd heard it with a fruit. Those egg, eggplants. Right. Cut in half. 
you look at this cross section of view. Yeah. And I also heard that there were the sort of the wood chips off the shavings, you know. Right. I just can't see that being the belly of a tadpole. A half day hike to a tadpole pond will settle the argument. If the tadpole's belly resembles the spiral in the middle of my tattoos, then it looks like the frog also lies at the heart of the most common of all Iban tattoos. The frog is important in Iban mythology as the creator of men. And a frog tattooed on the throat protects Aki and Gentan from losing their heads in battle. For me, tracking down the tadpole has brought into focus why Tom and I wanted to make this trip so badly. It's rare in this day and age to actually make a new discovery, and this makes us feel, for the first time, like true tattoo hunters. That's it. That's it. Look at that. There. You see that spiral pattern? That's exactly the same as the center of my tattoo. Just like the tadpole morphing into a frog, I see my Iban tattoos as part of my transformation here on the Scrum. From Vincent Errol Hemmingson to Mpong Anak Mingat, Aki's wearing the beret of his Iban Ranger Regiment. It reminds me just what a legend he is and how proud I am to be his son. Aki has no son of his own and only one other adopted Iban son. I'm the only white man in the family. It's a great honor and I feel a responsibility attached to it. I'm just not sure what it is exactly. What I do know is that seeing so many young men eager to wear a traditional tattoo, even if it's only from a felt pen, suggests that a tattoo revival among the Iban may be possible. From the moment that Aki and I met, I felt a connection between us. But I now understand that Aki also sees my adoption in more practical terms. It's a way to help the Longhouse by building alliances, an old Ivan strategy. <laughs> The shaman is calling upon the gods to recognize me as Umpong Anak Mingat after Aki's deceased grandfather. I am now Umpong, the son of Mingat, as Aki Basai is known to his friends. It must be obvious by now that I'm in way over my head swept along in this wild adventure as surely as if I'd been carried away by the floodwaters of the Scrong. <laughs> and what about this guy, Gentan? Look at him dance. He's still as supple as a teenager. And this day isn't over yet. Before the sun sets on Umpong Anak Mingat, he's going to find out that Aki Basai had a dream, predicting the arrival of a stranger who would become his son. This isn't the Vince Hemmingson of old. This is Umpang Anak Mingat. And as soon as the dancing stops, he learns that his visit here has been predestined. So what you're saying is both you and Aki, in your dreams, knew that I was coming. Yeah, we, we yeah. Exactly. So he wanted you to be his son because somehow or rather, right, you would be the, the catalyst to start this uh, uh, revival again. You would be one of the one of the cogs in the machine 
right you, you, know, you will play a part in helping us um, revive a dying culture that night perhaps under the influence of too much rice wine or simply exhausted from the heat and humidity I have a vivid dream of my own stumbling in the jungle I come upon Aki Basai. There we are, naked except for our spears and tattoos. And all around us, frogs are croaking. To Aki, my dream means that a protector spirit has moved to my side. It's an omen from the gods that I am a worthy son, and a sign that I must now be presented to my namesake, whatever that means. How does an ancestor from the spirit world make himself known in Aki's back room. Aki is saying, I call upon you to bring us peace, prosperity and health. If you are the spirits of my ancestors, I'm telling you that I have adopted a son and want you to recognize him as my true son. As Aki invokes the protection of the spirits on my behalf, I am filled with a sense of awe. Before the tattoo hunters pack up, Lars submits to the tattoo needles. Just one, like Vince's, on his left shoulder. Tom is next. The hand poke tattoo he received up the Rayong River in 1996 needs a little touching up. <laughs> By now there's a waiting list to get hands-on experience in this old technique. And for Eddie, there's nothing he'd rather be doing than supporting a renaissance of traditional tattooing. Three years ago, I couldn't speak much Iban. I didn't know much about the uh, traditional tattooing, how to do it properly, and now it is in my mission, my bajalai, to to discover all these things again, to uh, to prevent, to to stop st all these things from disappearing, so that the next generation can benefit from it. Eddie's commitment makes us hopeful that Iban tattoos have a chance of making a comeback. If for no other reason than that, we declare this trip a success. So I will tell him I'll be back next year. Next year. Yeah, tell him I'll be back next year. Iban! Like Eddie, I feel as if I've embarked on a Bujalai. My quest? to visit other indigenous peoples around the world and to learn as much as I can about their tattoos and spread the word. The vanishing of these sacred marks from the long houses along the Scrong presents a haunting question that could affect us all. What happens to a people, here or anywhere, who have lost their sacred traditions, and with that loss, have become invisible to their gods. <laughs>